Welcome back to another squirrely guide video. This was one that several people requested. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a viable arena defense. Now as always to keep this guide as concise and informative as possible I've broken it down into several topics, six topics to be specific. So let's go over that. First of all we'll go over an introduction and why arena defense is so difficult. And then the next three topics, we're gonna to go over different kinds of defenses. So number two will be the speed cleave defense. Topic three will be the counter bruiser defense. Topic four will be the stall comp defense. Topic five will be which defense to pick and different variations. And topic six, the final topic is how to prevent being attacked versus building a strong defense. And then we'll do a little wrap up. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so topic number one, intro to arena defense and why defense is hard. For those of you who are complete beginners, how you set up a defense team is you just click the defense team button and set up four characters that you want to use on your arena defense. This is mine currently. I'll explain how it works later. And uh, the other thing I want to discuss is why arena defense is so hard. Um, it's because no matter what defense you pick, the attacker will always be able to come up with a team that can beat it. If you followed my channel, you know I've been um, ranked one in the world before, and it's not because I was better than every other player in the world. It's because their defenses, I could always craft a specific team to beat them. So no matter what defense you make, you're gonna get cracked. So some people are always like, oh, my defense rate is dropping, it's not good. Don't worry, if you look at my history, I'm always in champion at the end of the week, and look how abysmal my defense rates are. And another thing to note is that some of you guys who are in lower tiers like Masters and Challenger, you guys might actually have like 30, 40, 50% defense rates. Expect that to drop as you get higher, because once you get into champion, most people are smart enough and experienced enough at this point to crack your defense. Um, even the best legend players, I doubt will get anything more than like 40% defense rates at an absolute best consistently. So don't worry if your defense rate gets lower over time. Worry more about having a consistent offense. And as I've proven here, no matter how bad your defense is, you're gonna be able to climb. So don't worry too much about it. So with that out of the way, let's start going into the different kinds of popular viable defense. All right, so topic number two, let's go over a speed cleave defense. At this rate, I'm actually have to refresh a few times just to find one. This becomes rarer the higher you go, but I finally found one here. So the basic principle of a speed cleave defense is to make sure that your defense goes faster than the other team and then just one shot them. So let's look at analyze this defense here. So this guy's plan is probably, I'm assuming the Athletica is fastest and also they have a speed imprint from Vildred. So their plan is probably to have Athletica go first, boost up their whole team. Rose gives everyone attack buff. Basar strips your whole team, assuming Athletica didn't. And then Vildred one shots your entire offense. I'm assuming this Vildred is built extremely attack oriented. Now let's go over the strengths and disadvantages of a speed cleave comp. One advantage to a speed cleave comp is that it's typically not extremely gear intensive with two exceptions. Um, you basically need a very high speed CR pusher, whether in this case it's Athletica or if it's a Basar or a Rose or a Judith or Helga or whatever it is at the lower tiers. You need that one person to have a lot of speed. Um, the other gear requirement is your main DPS, whether it's Vildred, BBK, whatever your primary cleaver is, they have to have a lot of offensive stats, but they typically don't need a lot of speed because you're bringing them with a CR pusher. And a lot of times, two of the supporting cast, whether that's um, a sec secondary CR pusher or a defense breaker or something, their stats are usually not that important. So this is why in the lower tiers, things like Ruzid, um, Helga... Tenebria, Vildred, something like that is very popular. It's because the gear requirements are pretty low. Um, and obviously, if this team is faster than any cleave team, they win by default. And if they're built strong, they can also one-shot a lot of bruiser teams. Now, the main disadvantage is that there are high speed requirements. Your CR pusher better be fast 
or it's going to not work 90% of the time. It's also hard countered by any team that has better speed than you, or the offense person could just bring double speed imprints like a Vildred and a Surin or something to make sure they go faster than you. And also speed cleave comps, because they spend so much effort trying to go first, a lot of times they're very easy to counter with a very tanky bruiser comp, bringing like Ruels and SSPs and Krauss or something. Um, so you can get hard countered by very tanky comps. And these comps are always also very squishy, so bruiser comps still beat it pretty quickly if they can tank the initial onslaught. So those are the basic principles of a speed cleave comp. Um, let's move on to the next topic. All right, so topic number three is the counter bruiser defense. Very classic defense. We have a few pseudo examples here. I wish this one kind of had like a Charles and an ML Ken, but let's just pretend um, we'll use this one as an example. It's kind of a counter bruiser defense. So the basic principle of a counter bruiser defense is to have a very tanky team that still has kill potential against your teams. The classic examples are ML Ken, Charles, SSB. These are all heroes that can be built fairly tanky while still doing a lot of damage. So let's go over advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is that these teams are viable against both cleave and bruiser teams. If you have better gear than the other team, you can beat both kinds of teams. They also typically have both tankiness, sustain, and kill potential against squishy cleave teams, so counter bruiser teams are very balanced. Also, a lot of counter bruiser teams have what I like to call the RNG factor, especially if you have something like ML Ken or Charles, because the attacker always has to worry about losing to RNG. For example, let's say you bring a defense break cleave to deal with ML Ken, and ML Ken just resists 15%. That means 15% of the time you win by default without doing anything. Charles, Elbrus counters, you can one-shot people. That's also an RNG factor. So counter bruiser teams are very scary on defense. The main disadvantage is that these kind of teams are very gear intensive. Bruisers are much harder to build than cleavers because a good bruiser really needs every stat like um, attack, defense, health, crit damage, crit. Like it's very hard to build a solid bruiser. Um, the other disadvantage is these teams will almost never go first because bruisers are slow. So that means if someone has a particularly strong cleave, they'll hit your bruiser defense anyway and still one-shot you. We'll show you that in a little bit. And um, also these kind of teams are very vulnerable to one-hit KO semi-cleave comps. Things where just bring like a lots Yafin, Watch, or Shuri or something. Some people get around that with things like Ruel, but it is very vulnerable to those comps. But... Um, in general, this is the kind of defense that's most common in champion tier and above. Speed cleaves become less common because it's so easy for champion players to tank them. Um, so this is a very solid defense and definitely something you should be working towards in the long run. Let's move on to the next kind of defense. All right, so topic number four is the infamous stall comp. Now, for the most part, you guys should not be running a stall comp because what I think what a lot of people do is they want to have a strong defense. So they'll come here, look at some of these legend players defenses and try to copy them and they'll look at them during rush hour. And uh, for example, something like this defense here. Um, and you have to understand that a legend players have different defenses in the last hour of rush hour than they typically do the rest of the season because what they're trying to do is minimize the amount of times they're attacked during rush hour. Now this is not truly a stall comp, but let's use our imagination here and let's pretend that ML Ken wasn't here and it was like an Elena or an ML Tywin or an Akart, something like that. So the goal of a stall comp is really simple. It's not to win. It's not to win because these kind of stall comps usually have no offensive potential. Their goal is to just waste as much of the attacker's time as possible so that in the last hour, rush hour means the one hour before arena reset on Sunday night where it determines the ladder. Um, they want to make sure that people, if they hit them, they get stuck in a 10, 15 minute match to deter people from attacking them. So let's go over advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is it's great for rush hour because it stalls enemies, it forces them into five, 10 minute fights. And I know people who get stuck against a stall defense and they just yield because they know that they're gonna save, get more points overall by yielding and winning three or four matches in the next five minutes than it is trying to beat this team for another five minutes. Um, 
So it deters attackers during rush hours. And the other advantage is if you have a really good stall team, you can theoretically stall long enough to kill the attacking team just with lightning. But we'll discuss that more in the disadvantages. So the main disadvantage is that a strong stall comp is extremely gear and imprint intensive. This is why it doesn't typically work for anyone but legend players. Because I run into stall comps in like low champion, I just laugh at it because you could just one shot it with a defense break cleave. And then you hit some of these top legend players and they all have defense break and you cleave them and you wonder why they still have like 75% of their life. It's because they often have like stacking imprints, everyone's SSS and stuff. So it's very gear and imprint intensive to make a truly annoying stall comp. Also, it's not really useful outside of rush hour because stall comps have no damage threat. A lot of attackers will consider it a safe comp to attack. Um, so even though it'll take 15, 20 minutes to beat it, some attackers don't care in the lower brackets. They're going to hit it anyway because they are almost certain they will win. So stall comps are definitely not for beginners. I really don't think it's for anyone unless you're trying to compete and be in the top 100 at the end of the week. So for the most part, I highly recommend you don't use a stall comp. Even, even legend players have different defenses outside the last hour or two of rush hour. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the next. All right, so topic number five, probably the ones you're most interested in is which defense should you pick? And well, the real answer is it depends on what you have built. Like obviously you cannot run a counter bruiser defense if you don't have any bruisers built at all. So really you should be trying to use the strongest heroes in your arsenal, whether that be you built cleave team so you have a viable cleave team you can put on your defense or maybe you just love bruisering so you do have bruisers built so generally in the lower tiers i say speed cleaves are very effective because people will dodge them and also just run into them and get one-shotted by them as you get to the higher tiers typically you want to run some kind of counter bruiser team now if you have ridiculous speed gear where you can have faith in your CR pusher and things like Arbiter Vildred are really strong in speed cleaves. Um, you can still try to use a speed cleave defense even in Legend, but it's much more gear intensive than it is in the lower brackets and smart attackers will always find a way to counter it anyway, um, short of losing because you have like an MLDB Arbiter and you dodge 10 times in a row. So another thing you can do is combine different defenses. I, I talked about three common defense types, but there's nothing stopping you from combining them. Like for example, I'm kind of running a counter bruiser defense, right? But there's a random acid stuck in there. That's just to deter um, like speed cleavers from attacking me. So let's go into the next topic where I really discuss that subject in more detail. All right, so topic number six, the final topic is Preventing being attacked versus building a strong defense. Now, you've been listening to me at all of this video. Um, I've kind of been telling you that no matter what defense you build, basically, you're going to get cracked. You're going to get cracked a lot, especially the higher you go. Once you start versing like legend and champion players consistently, it doesn't really matter what your defense is. Unless you have the godliest tier gear ever, they're going to find a way to crack you. Um, they didn't get to champion and legend for being bad at the game. So honestly, in my opinion, the better thing to do rather than building a strong defense, like you'll note my defense is not very strong. I showed you how bad my defense rate is overall. The better strategy is to prevent being attacked. So I told you I'd explain my defense. My defense, the only reason ACID is in there is because a lot of people running cleave teams, and again, I've told you guys myself, I prefer cleaving 100% of the time on offense because arena is very boring and I don't want to spend more than 30 seconds per match. This team will deter a lot of cleave teams because if they're running something like an ALOTS cleave or a Basar cleave, they know that ACID has almost 20 more base speed than them and the AI targets the fastest person first now. So they're just going to dodge me by default. They're going to say, you know what, I don't want to risk losing just because the Acid goes first and pushes back my Basar. They're just going to dodge me. And if you look at my battle log, I mean, anyone who bruises me, my team does not work well against bruisers. Like here, these people bruised me and they beat me. Um, but in general, I'm not being attacked all that much. So basically, 
um, that's my strategy. Like, I, I don't care when I do get attacked, I'm going to lose, but I'd rather have a 0% win rate on defense and get hit five or 10 times a day than have a 30% success rate on defense and get hit 100 times a day. So honestly, in general, this is why you'll also see on defense, something that's very common is people will have a counter bruiser team and they'll randomly just stick a Basar in there, right? And you'll be like, how does Basar synergize with that comp? It's because if, when you're trying to cleave it, if that Basar goes first and actually pushes back your team and you're running a cleave, you're gonna lose by default. And that's why people do it. And one thing you may have noticed when you attack Basar bruiser teams is that you go into the fight, let's say you wrist it, and you'll notice the Basar is like 180 speed. So it's completely useless, but they were using it just to scare you and deter people from attacking it. And a lot of times it does work. So I would say always have something like an ML Ken or an Arbiter or one random fast character on your defense and keep track of your battle log and you're going to notice that you get hit a lot less because a lot of people who would otherwise try to cleave your defense are just going to walk away from it and not even bother. And honestly, for the most part, I think that is the better strategy for consistently staying at high ratings. Um, this won't work in like Legend Top 100 or anything because they're going to smash you anyway. But anything below that, just put something fast or something that hard counters a cleave, one thing in your defense, just to have people think twice about attacking it. It'll make it much easier for you to maintain um, your rating overall. Like you'll notice that my defense rate is terrible and I'm in, uh, well, I'm in Legend right now. So um, yeah, it, it works. Just have something to deter people from attacking you and it's the best bet. So let's go to the conclusion. All right, so let's wrap this guide video up. So today we talked about arena defense. We talked about the three most popular ones, speed cleave, counter bruiser, stall comps. We discussed that the one you should use is based entirely on what heroes you have built, molded, and available. And we also discussed that in my opinion, it's more viable overall to have a defense that people dodge rather than trying to have a defense with a very high success rate until you try to go for top 100 end of the week legend, in which case you do need to win those defenses. But anything up to that, you could have a 0% defense. As long as you have a defense that's scary enough to dodge, you will have no trouble maintaining champion. Like I've been in champion for like the past, I don't know, like year or something at this point every week just to get these weekly tokens. And um, it's very easy, even with my usually below 20% defense rates. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you want to request any other guides from me, join my Discord and just leave it in the Ask for a Guide channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Till next time, guys. Peace out.